This is Dennis McMahon and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today we have with us uh, Anson Tebitz, the Secretary of the Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets uh, for the state of Vermont. Welcome, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Dennis. Great to be here. Nice to be talking about agriculture. That's great. And uh, today, it's right in the middle of uh, the harvest season for some, and, and uh, we're going to be talking about everything agricultural in Vermont. But first, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I grew up on a, a dairy farm in the town of Cabot, Vermont, um, and we had a hillside farm. We had a, a Jersey cows. We had uh, some sheep when I was growing up, a, a, a flock of sheep. We had sugaring operation, your traditional dairy farm on a hillside in, in Cabot. And, um, and I still uh, live pretty close to where it all started. And how did you uh, get involved in uh, the agriculture department? Well, it's always been uh, sort of part of what I've, I've done. Um, I, um, I've always been involved, even though I had other jobs off the farm. I was, uh, when we were milking cows, I was always milking cows with my dad. Even then I would go off to, uh, to work and so forth. So I've always been involved in agriculture one way or another. And uh, I've done, um, you know, part of my uh, world has been media and, and marketing with that. So uh, when Governor Scott came calling and asked me if I'd be interested in taking the position of, uh, of secretary, I said yes, because it was uh, kind of the two worlds I've always been in. Um, agriculture is always something I've had an interest in, even when I uh, covered it when I was at uh, WCAX in my early careers. Uh, part of my beat was covering agriculture. And, and uh, so it's, it's always been something I've done and, and, and enjoy. How has the transition been from uh, journalism to uh, it's, it's been It's been wonderful. It's, uh, it's a very uh, rewarding, uh, busy job. I haven't had really a chance to think about uh, covering stories or thinking about the media at all since transitioning. Um, it's me it's, in some ways, it's much the same. There's a lot of different variety. Uh, what we do at the agriculture agency and the media, uh, as you know, is, is something different every day. And um, some of the projects are a little bit longer in what we're doing, which is good. Uh, but for the most part, been so busy and uh, the transition was great and um, having a good time with it. Some challenging times, but al always having a good time doing it. That's great. Try to give us an, an outline of, of the scope of, of the agency. How big is it and what it does? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, uh, there's a lot of variety of what we do at the agency. Um, of course, we have, um, um, you know, the biggest industry in Vermont is dairy. It's about a $2 billion a year industry in, in dairy with uh, people processing milk and cheese. And some of our cheeses are known around the world. We know the big brands like Cabot and Jasper. And we have some artisan cheesemakers, everything from cow's milk and sheep's milk to, uh, 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 to goat's milk and so forth. But we do other things outside of some of those commodity things. Uh, we have a, a program called Weights and Measures. So people are going to their gas pumps and they pump up at the gas pump, uh, check there's a little sticker on it and the sticker will say when it's been inspected. And we have inspectors that go to the, to the gas pumps and making sure that the consumers are getting what they paid for. We also people that check uh, scanners inside stores with our weights and measures program. Uh, so what's supposed to be at the, uh, in the aisle when you buy something, the price there should match up when you get to the checkout counter. So we have inspectors that do that. We have animal health. We have veterinarians uh, to make sure that our animals, our livestock, are uh, not spreading diseases. So there's certain rules and regulations about transporting animals. So that's part of it. We have meat inspections. So uh, both federal, we do uh, federal meat inspection and, and help them out with that. We do local inspections so that meat that you're buying in a, a store is, is, is uh, safe. Uh, we have that going on. Uh, we have a big uh, division of water quality. Uh, farmers have uh, numerous regulations that they have to comply with to manage their operations, how they spread manure, uh, where it's spread, when it can be spread, uh, and make sure they're complying with something called the required agriculture practices, which are the rules and regulations uh, re relating to making sure that we protect our water so there's no uh, manure runoff uh, into our waterway. So that's one thing we do. Uh, we have an entomology department, and we're always tracking whether uh, uh, there are uh, uh, invasive species. You may have heard about the emerald ash borer that mm -hmm. has arrived in uh, Vermont. Our agency was involved uh, in helping to identify and confirm that it indeed had arrived in, in Vermont. So we're managing that. Mosquitoes, uh, we'll make sure some mosquitoes because some mosquitoes can uh, spread some very serious diseases. So they do that. 
So there's a wide array of things. We also have uh, economic development uh, through our, our agriculture development division, and they're working on promoting and getting uh, some of our small companies to bigger markets and so forth. So there's a lot of variety uh, of what we do, and we have about, about 130 employees statewide uh, that are working in the Agency of Agriculture. That's amazing. Uh, tell us about uh, farmers, uh, assistance to farmers. You have a program for that. Yes, we have um, uh, a lot of, we mentioned water quality. A lot of our water quality uh, programs are centered around making sure that the manure is managed correctly and it doesn't have a chance to run off into our waterway. So at times farmers have to invest in some of that big infrastructure, uh, manure pits, uh, making sure their are barnyards uh, so the manure doesn't run off. So we have cost share programs uh, that we, we help them with and they can apply for federal, uh, federal and state assistance. And so some of those projects, uh, say a farm wants to build a manure pit and some of those manure pits can range up into a half a million dollars, $650,000 depending on the size. Uh, so a farmer really um, can't afford that full cost so there are programs for uh, the state of Vermont to invest in that and also uh, federal programs as well. And what about uh, educating the people uh, in the industry, how, how, how to farm, how to just basically run their businesses? Yeah, yeah we, have, we have a lot of uh, educational programs uh, centered around, mainly around um, the water quality division. We do have some in technical assistance where we provide through the Agriculture De Development Division, uh, but for the most part, uh, where we, we work with U of M Extension closely. Mm -hmm. uh, they have agronomists that are on, on staff and we work with them closely. Uh, we work with some folks with USDA to help on technical assistance, but many of our programs that can um, assist our farmers, say they want to uh, look into um, uh, cover crops or no-till, et cetera, to, to sustain the water in the soil, because we're really focused on making sure that our water quality and our soil health is, is healthy and uh, we, we offer technical assistance uh, through that as well, through education. What is the state of the agriculture right now in, in Vermont, uh, in terms of either the country uh, uh, or even our, our near neighbors? Uh, what is the scope of this, and are there any particular problems that are being faced right now? Well, I would, let's, let's uh, talk about uh, dairy. Uh, dairy has gone undergone a very difficult time over the last five years and the farmers have not been paid uh, an adequate price to, to meet their production costs. And that's related because there is too much dairy across the country and the world. And when there's too much dairy out there, particularly fluid milk, drinking milk, mm -hmm. uh, that lowers the price uh, to the dairy farmer. Um, it has started to go up a little bit, so there's a little bit of encouraging uh, news going on with that. But for the most part, on the dairy sector, it has not gone well. Other industries that seem to be doing okay and continue to grow, our maple industry continues to grow. We continue to be the number one producer of maple products uh, in the United States. Uh, and it's more than just for your pancakes uh, now with maple. Uh, you're seeing it infused in, in products like uh, barbecue sauce and spirits and beer, uh, salad dressings. So there continues to be growth in that. A lot of investment has gone on over the last uh, decade in maple, so that's happening. Another industry that's new, relatively new to Vermont, it's been here for a couple of years, but is growing tremendously this year, is hemp. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the midst of uh, harvest season with hemp. Uh, it was legalized by the uh, federal government, and we've had a pilot program in Vermont for the last couple of years, uh, but now it's legalized, so a lot of farmers are taking a, a look at that. They're growing it. We have about 900 people growing hemp in the state of Vermont. Uh, so that's a new industry that's happening. And our food, our small food processors, uh, artisan cheese folks, uh, they continue to make inroads. Um, and, uh, you know, Vermont's brand as far as quality over quantity continues to be uh, stellar across the United States. And what about meat? How, how does Vermont stand in terms of meat production? And uh, is it a, uh, something that is marketed uh, nationally or, or even regionally? Uh, mostly our, our, uh, we have a number of uh, grass-fed beef operations uh, that are in Vermont. And they are, they are making their product mainly for our robust co-op market that we have in Vermont. Uh, our co-ops uh, across the state uh, like to see and like to uh, support um, local farmers, so they're buying, buying a lot of uh, local meat. Um, and uh, that's, that's, that's generally the, where their audience is. Um, folks 
uh, are continuing to support uh, our farmers because they want to know where their, their product is coming from, how they're treating their animals, um, how they're treating their land and so forth. And that's one avenue I think people are supporting, uh, particularly meat, uh, local meat, uh, through their local co-ops in some of our smaller supermarkets. That's great. What about the agricultural development? How, how, how does that work in terms of uh, the land? Uh, we seem to be having a lot of mall development and maybe some other types of uh, housing developments. How does agricultural development fit into that? Well, agriculture um, has to be done in the, uh, in the rural areas because that's where the land is. We have a number of small food companies uh, that are making incredible products, and we try to support them through um, maybe getting them to uh, a farmer's market, maybe getting them to a trade show where they can get a, 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 another buyer uh, or a bigger buyer in front of them. And we have uh, cost share programs to help with that. Uh, but uh, those, those are, those are uh, a difficult, um, um, you know, it may start in someone's kitchen. Mm -hmm. You have a recipe in your kitchen. Uh, you, it's great. You show it to your friends. They like it. And then you may want to go to a commercial kitchen and rent out some space for couple days a week and make that product, get it to a farmer's market, maybe get it in a few stores in Vermont. And then the next level is you want to get it to um, either statewide or into some of our bigger markets. Uh, Vermont is blessed that uh, we have a great agriculture roots, uh, but we're also blessed that we're close to people who do have uh, enough income that can support a quality product from Vermont. So we try to get our, some of our products into Boston, into New York, into Philadelphia, into Washington, sort of on the east side. Um, so that's, that's a, a big market for them. Uh, and uh, a lot of people in those uh, regions identify uh, with Vermont because of its commitment to its, its, its agriculture, its land, and its environment. Does the department, the agency, uh, get into things like uh, the use of the term Vermont? I know there might have been an issue of it, Vermont, Vermont maple syrup, using the term Vermont when it's really not from Vermont. Do you get into that? Yeah, we, we, we're always looking to make sure we protect uh, uh, the Vermont brand and the name. Um, usually when it gets to a point where there may be a dispute or someone abusing that, um, that would be turned over to the Attorney General's office and they'll look into it uh, through the consumer, uh, consumer laws because we do want to make sure that, that, um, that uh, the Vermont uh, name is not abused uh, in some of our products. Now, suppose someone is watching this and they're in college uh, or they're uh, thinking about a career. How does the agency uh, foster an interest in, in an agricultural career? Um, we try to foster that through uh, partnerships, and we always are encouraging folks, if you're interested in agriculture, um, um, hook up with a, a, a farmer, uh, maybe try it for a while, maybe spend a summer on the farm. If you're into vegetables and cropping and so forth like that, do that. If you want to work on a dairy farm, there are numerous jobs that are available on dairy farms right now. Uh, try it out. Uh, learn from someone who has experience, and uh, there are programs out there, uh, either through the Vermont Land, Land Trust, uh, Land Link, um, if people are interested in actually purchasing their own farm or uh, taking it to the next level. But we're always encouraging either uh, internships or um, just uh, learning from a, a neighboring farmer to see if it, it does work for you because uh, it's something you don't want to jump into lightly. Mm -hmm. Well, I see that there's a number of uh, other projects that the state's involved in, uh, your department. What is the Working Lands uh, Project? The Working Lands uh, Enterprise uh, Group, that is a, um, an organization where we provide uh, assistance to, say, you're a, a cheesemaker and you're at a certain level and maybe you have two or three employees and you're making a certain amount of cheese, but you want to take it to the next level that may employ more people, may buy more product. Uh, we provide a grant program for them. So there's an independent board. Uh, we manage the program through the agency. Uh, they make a proposal to the board about, hey, I need to buy uh, this piece of infrastructure to take it to the next level, which will create jobs or provide uh, more, uh, more stability to, uh, to their operation. So they come before them, uh, they apply, and then we may buy them. Uh, say they need a um, a cream separator or they need a truck to haul their milk, uh, that particular board uh, can provide assistance to them. This year the legislature appropriated an extra half a million dollars uh, to that program 
and that money is earmarked to um, the dairy sector or the environmental sector. So if that was important as people look at new ways to uh, grow their operations. That is what that uh, particular uh, 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 enterprise board does. Mm -hmm. I, you notice you mentioned the legislature. What, what types of uh, developments or uh, achievements or uh, issues uh, has the agency dealt with in this, this first half of this session? Yeah, we've, we've dealt with um, a number of uh, particularly issues. Um, a lot of it uh, centered around which is we just talked about with the uh, Enterprise Board. Um, we were working with them trying to uh, find the necessary dollars that would be able to go to that particular uh, uh, sector. We write um, uh, various laws um, around um, hemp. Uh, we're, we're able to add a couple of new employees to grow the hemp program in Vermont because in the hemp program we want to have it focused much like our artisan cheese uh, industry and it has to be centered around uh, safety and also on quality. Mm. Uh, we also are able to add a couple of employees to support our um, apiaries and our bee sector. Uh, we have, uh, it's important that our bees remain healthy and flourishing and to do that, uh, we need to get people out checking on hives more, making sure that uh, disease is not spread. So we were able to get a couple of more employees to work on that. So all those things are things we worked with the legislature on. And of course, uh, a lot of it's been along uh, our budget and, and how we maintain the resources we need to run the uh, organization and support our farmers. What about the relationships with uh, other state agricultural uh, agencies and with Congress? Is there anything coming up that uh, concerns you in, the, in, the, in Congress? Well, we did get some uh, um, from USDA. We have a good relationship with USDA. We, they, we were awarded uh, one of three around the country. Uh, this is a dairy innovation center, mm -hmm. uh, and that is going to provide uh, money for us and our dairy farmers to look at new ways to um, innovate, maybe develop new products, maybe change their uh, farming um, habits, uh, maybe go to uh, possibly uh, a grass-based dairy. All those things uh, were very, very important. Um, we, we've just received word of that in the last few weeks, and that will continue to be part of what we do over the next few years. And uh, uh, Congress has assured us that there will be some more money available to continue to grow that uh, program to help our, our dairy industry over the, over the coming years. How about community involvement? Uh, what types of uh, programs do you have that perhaps uh, town boards or uh, civic organizations or other types of groups, 4-H clubs, can, can get involved with? Yeah, it's very important that uh, uh, agriculture get out, tell uh, the community what they're doing. Um, over time, people are not as close to where their food has, is being grown, uh, and that's in Vermont as well. We're still a very, very rural state. Uh, but there are pockets of uh, rural areas where people are not visiting farms, seeing farms. We have something that uh, the agency supports in the summertime called Breakfast on the Farm. Mm -hmm. And that's an opportunity for uh, the public to walk onto a dairy farm early in the morning, A, get a free breakfast, and then see um, how milk is produced, see how the cows are cared for, see how they're fed. Uh, and there's a couple of those uh, each summer. Uh, those are important. Uh, we have a, a program that we support called 2 Plus 2, where um, it's a um, college program, or if you spend, uh, it's a scholarship program that we help support with the help of the legislature, where um, a farmer um, uh, may have a, 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 a kid that's going to college, they go to VTC for two years, uh, they go to VTC for two years, and they can go to University of Vermont in their agriculture program, and this is a scholarship program. Uh, so those are all uh, very important. We sponsor 4-H uh, clubs, uh, but it's very important um, that we continue to uh, expose the public that's not involved in agriculture of uh, what's happening. Let me ask you about some of these uh, issues. Uh, I understand you have a problem with phosphorus, and there's a Vermont Phosphorus Innovation Challenge. What's that about? This is related to uh, improving our water quality um, over time in Vermont. Um, uh, with the help of the Agency of Natural Resources and the Agency of Commerce, uh, we all got together and we just challenged uh, companies to look about removing phosphorus, uh, say, from manure. How could we remove some phosphorus from uh, manure? Uh, and um, so that would not 
uh, necessarily make its way to a waterway. Now phosphorus is, is very needed uh, and it's essential for plant growth, mm -hmm. but if there's too much in one particular area, that is where the problem is. So we're looking at, uh, companies are looking at, um, there's a company called uh, Rock Dust, and Rock Dust is, is, uh, comes out of a quarry, and it's not really dusty, it's a very small pebble, but that can absorb phosphorus. So they've been part of this phosphorus challenge. We gave them some seed money to do some studies, um, and um, we're, we're continuing to monitor those. We've got stuff called biochar, where that's another thing. It's a, it's a wood-based uh, product, and that absorbs phosphorus, so the phosphorus doesn't have a chance, chance to uh, uh, leak into the uh, waterways. That is one. So all of these things are part of the uh, Vermont Phosphorus Innovation Challenge, and uh, we continue to um, evaluate those and there could be some more funding coming up in the coming months for those particular projects that could be used statewide and, and advance those companies as well. And you mentioned uh, bees and there's always a, a, a great deal of information lately in, in national news and scientific journals about the bee population. Uh, how are we doing on that? The bee population is always a, a challenge. Um, tremendous interest from our, um, there's a uh, a lot of bee clubs around the state of Vermont, backyard uh, uh, bee, uh, beekeepers. Um, and um, it's very important because uh, we've had issues with mites and disease over time. But a bee can travel as much as uh, five miles in its daily journey. So if it's, if it's carrying a disease, it could get into another hive and cause trouble there. So we're always uh, looking to make sure that if we identify that there could be a problem in one sector, uh, that the uh, neighboring uh, beekeeper knows about it uh, and they can deal with it. But there's tremendous amount of science and research going on, particularly at UVM, uh, related to the health of bees because bees, they are important for our apple crop, vegetable crop. Um, all of our, our farmers rely on bees is for pollination. That's great. Now we're looking now at the, the uh, middle of October. How do you project the, the next season to do in terms of issues or, or or problems, or how are we doing? Going to be doing as we go into the winter, if you can. Well, a lot this. of a lot of agriculture is uh, is controlled by the uh, by the weather, and uh, if we look back in the spring, it was very wet, uh, and then it recovered uh, nicely for the most part uh, for a lot of our farmers uh, throughout the summer. Um, now going into uh, you know the winter months, uh, most farmers uh, really don't like really really cold weather because that can impact uh, what's happening on farms. Um, but uh, there's some concern about uh, you know it's uh, and particularly when you talk about maple, um, we have wild fluctuations in our weather now. Um, you know the day we were recording this uh, this broadcast, it was really uh, having a really hard, consistent rain not a soft rain. We're having a lot of one inch, two inch rain events. Um, those are something new that farmers are coping with. And one of the hopes is uh, they're gonna have to adapt that over the time is because they're working to improve their soil health and that will act as a sponge. So some of these uh, really strong, uh, particularly um, uh, rainy days uh, that we've been experienced that they, the soil can take that and then that has a long-term impact on the health of our waterways. So weather is, uh, is one of the biggest challenges that farmers face on a, on, a, on a daily basis and it's something that they're always uh, watching that weather forecast to say what's next. And what about issues like soil erosion? Is that a problem because of the last few years? Anytime, our... anytime there's a big rain it has a lot of uh, impact um, even in non-agriculture uh, world. So um, you know it rains goes down the roof, uh, can go under the parking lots, goes into the drains, has to go somewhere, goes into our treatment plants uh, in, the, in the more urban areas. Um, you know, our rural areas, um, it goes down our back roads, it can find its way to water. So anytime there's a hard rain event, uh, it, has a, it has an impact maybe two months, three months down the road, um, and then maybe it warms up, uh, and um, so we face, uh, we face water quality issues from there, but anytime you have a, a, a dramatic, um, especially rain event, it can impact water quality uh, months down the road. Mm -hmm. well, we've managed to cover quite a bit, and uh, before we conclude, I'd like to give you the opportunity perhaps to address uh, the Vermonters uh, who are watching and uh, with any special message or any special concerns you have. 
Well, thank you, Dennis. It's been, uh, it's been great talking agriculture. Um, I would just encourage everyone to, to learn and listen, engage uh, with their farm, farmer or farmer, uh, buy as many local products as you can, uh, particularly in milk. If you look on milk, if you look for the number 50, code 50 on your milk, that means uh, it's produced in Vermont and bottled in Vermont, so code 50 on your milk. Uh, shop around, get out, look around, support your farmer in any way, uh, and learn and listen to what they're doing. Um, um, most of them are absolutely um, needed for our communities, and uh, we're blessed to have such uh, abundance of tremendous uh, local products that we can uh, eat and share here in the Green Mountain State. That's great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my special guest today has been Anson Tebbets, the Secretary of the Vermont Agency of Agriculture, Food, and Markets. Thank you for watching.